it's like if you're born with brown eyes this is what i am and that's what i've always been um so it's a different kind of life Hi and welcome to Artist Interviews with Studio Yale. Today we have Nina Weiss showing us around her studio, her artwork, and what it means to be a painter. Nina, we're so happy to have you. Thanks for joining us. I'm so happy to be here with you, Elise, and Studio Yale. I am in a live work studio in Evanston, Illinois, um, near Lake Michigan, just north of Chicago. And it's an old factory building that was made into live work lofts. So uh, it's got like 40 foot ceilings and natural light. And I live here. Sometimes my kid lives here too. That was my choice. That was a pretty clear cut choice for me. And I never wavered. I never looked back. I never considered a making a living because you know you don't when you're 16 and I never considered that I wouldn't make it. I started biking and the biking took me way out into a landscape I'd never been to before. Uh, I know that cornfields don't sound that exotic to everybody but um, being from the east coast I was just entranced in a way you know just all these big open safe spaces and I could bike through them and that's when I started really falling in love with the landscape the landscape for me has been evolving into this prairie landscape that is almost abstract in that it's such a deep dive that you just begin to see the marks and the mark making and the layers and it kind of loses some of the elements of a traditional landscape. My best times of day are the golden hour and you know a bright sunny day with lots of shadows. The worst kind of day is like a gloomy overcast one. I drew in pastels for 20 years. I was in a you know a big gallery and we sold all my work and um, then I kind of transitioned back into painting, and I'm quite sure that 20 years of drawing in this manner really informed how I paint. Some areas may have 10 or 15 passes, some may have just two or three, but you're always seeing the effect of all the paint underneath, and then the colors just kind of layer up. And, and maybe that's part of the darkness that you see, because the more paint that you put in, the richer you can get those darks. My first love when I was learning to paint were the Expressionists and the Fauves. So from a very young age, I was seeing color differently and really um, feeling uh, the effects of the dark and the light and the warm and the cool and the saturation. So I think that's what I'm exploring. I feel like my paintings are, are very much based in drawing, kind of like maybe Lautrec would be or maybe the way um, Van Gogh would be. There's a group of painters that I have a very close affinity for called the Canadian Group of Seven. And very occasionally, but enough to be very gratifying, people will look at my work and they'll go, Group of Seven. I go way back with you guys because I knew, uh, I think Joanne Chapel carried my work when you guys had a gallery somewhere in San Francisco. The edition that I'm doing with Studio EL is from an ongoing series called Waterways. And those are 12 by 12, so they're quite small, but it's nice break from the really large scale work that I've been doing with prairies and other waterways. Take you with me for a second, do a little tour. So what I'm doing right now is, um, I don't know if you can see this, but my um, studio is set up to accommodate my students. And um, all of the work tables here are for them, and then all of the easels are for them. My workspace is um, the wall, basically. A couple of years ago, uh, one of my students 
gifted me, let's see, uh, let me see that. <laughs> Isn't that great? So we have a bunch of these big Nina tomato cans. Um, so that's what my work table looks like, my palette. We've found ways to hang way up high all of my work. Let me take you over and show you a close up of the piece that I'm working on now. This piece is in progress and you can see all the layers. I'm just surrounded by my work and, and my inspiration and things in progress. My work was picked up by a Canadian clothing company. So yeah. they're making, <laughs> you know, they're making designs out of my, um, my paintings, including masks. But I'm always working, I'm always painting. Um, that never stops. In 2022, I have my first museum show, which is at, yeah, at the Peggy Notovart Museum, which is a nature museum. So I'm teaming up with the scientists and the naturalists to talk about the prairie and prairie conservation. Uh, well, I love Frank Lloyd Wright in the Prairie School, big time. Um, you know, and I've toured many of his places and, and, you know, my nice furniture is prairie style as well. The vertical lines, the strong geometry just really resonates with me. If you've been an artist long enough, you realize it's your business and it's my life. So, uh, you know, people will say like, oh, isn't it difficult to let go of your phoenix? I'm like, no. I would be swamped if I was my own biggest collector. It's Philip Glass and Steve Reich and all of the music that comes from there. And Elgar and Vaughn Williams, Young Rascals or Hermits. You know, maybe it's Linda Ronstadt or Cosmic Coast National Young or Duke Pollock. Usually I'll paint with cats or, you know, just take a break with something. I miss coffee shops. You know, I'm I'm that artist who wants to sit and have a deep conversation in a coffee shop. Nina, thank you again for having us. It was so fun to connect and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. Um, welcome to my studio. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, hope to see you around. Thanks. I think that's what happens when a New Yorker paints a cornfield. <laughs>